and Miyeti Yala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, Magban Southeast Zone, claims that some of its members have been languishing in prison custody without trial for the past five years. The Southeast Zonal Chairman of Magban, Alaji Gidado Siddiqui, who spoke in Oka, described as regrettable the way some herders were being labelled as kidnappers and armed robbers and eventually dumped in correctional centres. He appealed to the state government through the Ministry of Justice and the Prison Authority to look into the matter so that members in the prison custody will either be freed or tried according to the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The association says that any Fulani herder caught in any criminal act in the course of discharging his legitimate business will be dealt with in accordance with the laws of the association. Okay, Dr. Constance Ikoku, a Rise News Analyst, joins us now to look at some of these issues. Hello, Constance. Hello. Nice uh, joining us on Newsnight uh, today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Magban's uh, voice is resonating. I mean, as usual, some, some will say that, you know, a couple of years back, it was like uh, they bestrode uh, the entire length and breadth of Nigeria. How do you describe uh, this outcry against its members? Well, this is an ongoing issue in Nigeria's security challenges. It's not only about the Magban. There are so many other parts of the country where the challenges are difficult and overwhelming. I mean, th there is an argument to be made that um, the problems that we face can be overwhelming for any president, uh, any security force. And uh, even if you have exceptional abilities, it might take a lot to arrest uh, the present uh, conditions. Um, having said that, with, um, with, uh, with leadership comes responsibilities. Now we have uh, new service chiefs that have been appointed by the new president and then we have a new Inspector General of Police. I'm sure they're listening to all of these things that are happening uh, with the pastor that was also killed in Ogun State. Nigerians are then looking forward to see <clears throat> what they have to offer. Will there be fresh thinking? Uh, Would there be uh, something different from what we saw in the past eight years? Mm. They have a lot of work to do and we're waiting. Yes, indeed. And let's uh, even look at uh, the desecration of uh, the church, you know, by the kidnappers or gunmen who invaded uh, that church in Ogun State, killing the pastor, you know, on the pulpit and uh, abducting seven others that uh, the so safe and the police uh, were able to, you know, uh, rescue and the rest. What does this again uh, portend? You know, yes, the new administration has set a template for uh the managers of nigeria security the armed forces the police the new national security advisor and the rest is there supposed to isn't there supposed to be a new temple to really beat down on this uh, in spate of insecurity in the country what happened in ogun state is tragic and um it's been happening like i said earlier um the new service chiefs uh, they've been appointed barely two weeks three weeks um, so we might have to give them some time, but there should be a sense of urgency. There is a silent majority in this country that believes that the major problem that we have lies with leadership. Uh, with leadership, uh, a crop of people who uh, do not understand their responsibilities and what they're supposed to do. With a crop of people uh, who get there and uh, decide um, not to do anything. So. The question then becomes, um, in this situation, in the prevailing conditions where you have uh, um, um, poverty, World Bank has just said the other day that at least 1.7 million more people will be further pushed into poverty because of uh, such drivers or such factors as high inflation rate, skyrocketing food, pr food prices, uh, removal of forced subsidy, and all these things. So it, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, a time that calls for an emergency. Maybe they need to declare, first of all, a state of emergency, and then... All of, over the country? Yes. 
instead of making emergency on security, on security, you may not declare it, but uh, when you're... If you what, understand the a state no. of emergency, particularly in the military balance, if you open your curtain... So I'm not speaking. <laughs> I'm not speaking in military terms, okay. on military balance. You don't have to say there's a state of emergency, but there is a sense of urgency that you should have with regard to what is happening. Mm. Uh, there should be a 360 degree turnaround because whatever we've been doing in the past hasn't worked. So is there something different that we should? Can we do? really categorically say it has not worked or we just expect uh, much more? Because if you look at, uh, you, I mean, uh, motorists traverse Abuja, Kaduna, Abuja, Lokoja, or Kene, you know, freely up to Kano now, maybe the black spots in uh, the issue of uh, terrorists, kidnapping, uh, some isolated areas, not so isolated in Niger State, we still have them in Katsina. Of course, Zamfara is still ever on the boil and part of the Sambisa forest. But the Nigerian military have been doing a wonderful job, you would Obvious, say. Obviously, security forces have been doing what they can. Uh, you know, depending on how much resources they have and how much synergy they have between the different security forces. But it might not, it, it doesn't seem to be enough because every day when you listen to the news, there are cases of kidnapping, of banditry, of terrorism, of criminality and rascality. Mm. Um, so that means that it's not enough. Whatever they're doing is not enough. And like I mentioned earlier, it is an overwhelming case. Mm. But you are a leader, so you have to find solutions to whatever problems that we are facing. And the problems uh, we're facing now, according to a former governor of Sokoto State, Atahiru Bafarawa, is that of food insecurity because of, you know, the rising cases or the insecurity in the northeast and the northwest, preventing farmers from, you know, going to do the only work they know. So, yes, food fa scarcity... Yes. Food prices hitting beyond the roofs. Former Governor Tahiru Bafarawa has um, legitimate concerns. He's not the only one that is worried. Yeah, I think many people within the country are worried uh, because it's obvious that more people are going to fall into poverty because of lack of food security. The security challenge already is ongoing. It has been um, ongoing for a while. And so it has prevented farmers from going to farm. And so it's not only the Northeast and the northwest that will be impacted. The entire country will be impacted because even the middle bed places where we call the food basket of our nation, uh, most, in most cases you have attacks and farmers cannot go to their farm. So if they cannot farm, they cannot then transport food or have the food transport to other parts of the country. So it's, it's an entire country pro problem and he is right to say that the new president should focus squarely on that. No government wants large swathes of its population in hunger, and which is a security risk. Yeah. So you're not only talking about criminals uh, who have the profession of killing people. When people are hungry, it is a security risk. I was talking the other day about an expert at the National Bureau of Statistics who said that at least 40% of Nigerian children between um, zero and five are stunted. The, the, what I didn't say, I didn't explain why that is the case. She explained that it is because of malnutrition. When people do not have the food to eat, proper food, adequate nutrition, from the age of zero to five, they become stunted. 40% is a huge number. So these are some of the things that need to be addressed quickly. As I said, very a quickly. sense of urgency. Uh, yeah, very quickly indeed, uh, Constance. And some people are even asking President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to go into negotiation with these bandits and terrorists. You know, maybe like uh, late President uh, Yaradua did with the Niger Delta uh, militants. Is there any correlation? Will that really bring the desired peace, like at least we see in the Niger Delta, even if it's not 100% in the rest? Th those are two different cases. And you have to look at a place like Kaduna State where some people were paid. I think they were Fulani headsmen, they were killing people, they were paid by the former governor, and that, that did not yield positive results. So who are you paying? What do they want? What are they looking for? Are they just criminals 
hiding under different, you know, different uh, umbrellas. Are uh, they exactly. Nigerians? Are they Nigerians? So we know that politicians um, have in the past, you know, brought in people from other parts of the, the, the uh, West, West, African, Africa. West African region mm. to use them for political purposes. So why should you be paying these people? Again, we have new service chiefs. It is something that they have to sit down and look at comprehensively and decide the best solution to that the, problem. The, the beauty of these service chiefs is that they are all battle-tested, you know, in various theaters of uh, war around the country from the Northeast to the Northwest and not central well we're wishing them very well in their endeavors and uh, all we want is a secured nigeria thanks so very much dr constant you're welcome all right.